Hello, good morning. <laughs> well, good morning here, yeah? and um, welcome back to my channel. My name is Adeli Ke Babalola, and in this video, I'll be sharing 15 IELTS reading tips and tricks, especially if you're looking to achieve a band 8 or higher, you know, in the IELTS reading test. Now, 15 means that, you know, there's a lot you need to know. And we're going to take them one by one. But before we get to that part, I want to show you my... Okay, sorry, we have company again. So I'm going to show you my IELTS results. This is... Um, I had my test in 2017, March 2017. I took the academic model when I needed to... So Oh, oh, please. No, 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 please. I need, I need this place to be quiet. You're smiling. Sorry, let's just go on. I, I hope you can hear me nonetheless. So I took my test in 2017 when I needed to send in the results to um, the University of Glasgow in Scotland. So this is my test report form can see it and um, for listening that's in listening I had 8.5 reading I had 8.5 writing I had 7 and then speaking I had 7.5 well I barely had anybody to train me for this because I was still um, you know um, having my national youth service score at the time and of course I didn't have so much money to pay for maybe a tutor. I think, I think I need just one center and to me it seemed quite expensive at the time. So I trained with a few resources that I found online in about three weeks and this was my results. I was surprised when I saw listening and reading 8.5 because it meant that I probably missed just one question. Um, it means I had 30, uh, was it 38 now? Yeah, 38 or 39 in each of them. So um, you see it's possible to have this kind of result and even better. I have people who have taken the academic model and also add 7.5. Some have even add 8. Well, that's 8 is common with general training, but there are people who have had more. Even speaking, a lot of people have 7, um, 7, 7.5, and then 8. So it's possible for you to have a very good result in your IELTS test. But today we are fo focusing on the IELTS reading, and I'm going to take you through these 15 tips to help you. Now, whether you are taking the academic model or the general training model, you're going to spend 60 minutes answering 40 questions. And as I said in previous videos, you can um, you know, take some time to go through my IELTS reading video. Now, um, you know, if you went through that, you realize I said that for the academic model, you're going to have three passages in three sections. But if it's general training, you're going to have five passages in the same three sections. So at the end of the day, you're doing three sections, a total of 40 questions. Now, the first thing you need to know is the first two points. Make sure you scheme and scan. Scheme and scan. These two points are the most important when you do the IELTS reading test. Now, Another way to say scheme and scan is this reading strategy called SPQ3R. It's taught to children, you know, as from junior secondary school one. Okay, I remember that when I was a teacher in one of the states in Nigeria, I had to teach this it was in the English textbook. So the first thing S means survey. It means when we see a passage, just glance through. It's like surveying your plot of land. You just look through. You're not looking for anything in specific. So when you um, survey a passage, you look at the title. You look at the paragraph structures. Are they short paragraphs? Are they long? Don't look for any information. Just look at the themes on the surface. And it's also possible that you might notice, you know, if the paragraphs are lettered A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, you would also see that. That's what you do when you do a survey. Now the P, which is the, less, the, the next letter rather, um, means preview, preview. When you do a preview of your reading passage, you are giving yourself a summarized version of that passage. And the best way to do it is read the first sentence and the last sentence of each paragraph. So let's say you have seven paragraphs. You read the first and last sentence of A, first and last sentence of B, the same thing for C, D, E, F, and G. 
So it means that at the end of the day, you'd have read 14 sentences in total. Now, these 14 sentences would give you a summary of the passage. What's the essence of reading the first and last, first and last? Normally, when we write, or when, you know, in standard writing, you should put your, um, you know, your topic sentence in your first sentence. The first sentence of your paragraph should contain your topic sentence. So the idea is, the most important thing you're saying in that paragraph is going to be found in your first sentence, the very first sentence of your paragraph. And then in other cases, or in some cases, you find that the last sentence of that same paragraph would reiterate the point in the first sentence. So it means that when IELTS ask questions, some of their questions can easily be found at the beginning or at the end of a paragraph. But that does not mean that they are not answers you would find, you know, you will find other answers in the middle of the paragraph, in, you know, in the middle um, lines and sentences. So that's what you do. When you read the first and last sentences of each paragraph, you are getting a preview of that passage. Now, um, think about it like, <laughs> think about it like a movie. Okay, so I know that Frozen, well, I love cartoons. Frozen 2 will be out by, um, is it this month? Sometime this month or so, or probably December. Anyways, I saw the trailer and, you know, I know what to expect, okay? I think our sister's name is Elsa and something, something, I can't remember now. Okay, so, but the points, you know, my reference, I was trying to tell you that um, the preview is a summary. It's like a coming soon version of the actual passage. So that's why you did a preview. The next letter of that acronym is Q and Q refers to question. As soon as you've read the preview or you've done your preview, go on to the questions. Look at the questions you have in all the passages and read them very quickly. The idea is in the process of reading the questions, you would get, you would recall things you saw while doing the preview. So it's possible that at the point of seeing a question, you will know where you found its answer and you would write it down onto your answer sheet immediately. So that's it for question. Read the questions. Remember, if you saw some, if you saw some of the answers before, if not, no problem, you're going to come to it. And this next thing you're going to do is read. That's the first hour, read. And this reading is not an intensive reading where you're reading one word and the next word and the next word. No, you just want to read those middle lines and sentences that you did not read when you did the preview. And that's because you want to make sure that you have like, almost all the information you need to answer your questions. So you don't read intensively, you just read very quickly, okay? So if I would go back to the scheme and scan word, when you scheme, you just read very fast. You read the lines very fast. But when you scan, you already know what you're looking for. And so you want to find that, even if it's just three words, you want to find the three words inside your passage, okay? Now, the second R is recall and recall means to supply your answers to your questions supply the answers to the questions so once you have read your passage that's the middle lines just begin to supply your answers and if you were paying attention you realize that you had found some answers before and then in the process of doing the read you've actually found other answers how do you save the answers you you know you find when you're not ready to supply the answers use your pencil to underline once you see what that looks like, the answer to your question, underline it. And if you're doing it on the computer, you highlight. Well, that's the way it works in computer based actually, but we'll talk about that in another video. For now, just make sure that you keep underlining words in your passage that would, you know, that are around your answer or that would lead you back to your answer. And the final R is review. When you are supplied the answers to your question, make sure you create some time, even if it's five minutes to check through all the answers to be sure that they are all correct. So that, those are the first two points, which I extended into the SVQ 3R. If you don't want to take that long method, what I use and you know what I eventually teach people is just do Q and R, question, question and recall, not read, question and recall. So the idea is you get the passage, go straight to the questions, read all of the questions, and begin to pick them one by one and locate them in the, in the passage. So it's a case of take the question, go find it in the passage, and then pick the answer. It's that simple. And it helps me to save time too. So 
when you mastered the long process, you can actually now switch over to the short one because it will save you a lot of time. So those are the first two points. Now, the third one is understand your question types. Now, you know that in the reading question, you have 14 question types, you know, um, matching, uh, matching sentence endings, um, uh, matching headings, which is the, is the, is the most um, difficult in code for some people. Then you have all the other completions, sentence completion, note completion, form completion, and the rest of them. So um, the idea is, whatever the case, make sure you understand the question type you're dealing with. It will help you to know the strategies to use for that particular question. In future videos, we're actually going to take these question types one by one. So to make it a lot easier for you to figure them out, you know. So number four is expect paraphrase. When you read your passage, don't expect that the question will be you know, would bear the same words. You would find that the question somehow paraphrases what you have in the passage. And this happens a lot with true false not giving and even multiple choice. The way the sentence writes it, you know, the way the sentence um, is written in the passage is not necessarily the exact way you would find it in the question. So don't be lost if you see necessary somewhere and in the other place you saw it is needed or there is a need to, you're saying the same thing, okay? So um, that's it for number four. Then the fifth tip I'd like to share for the IELTS reading is um, make sure you, you know, keep some time aside to go through your answers. I think I said that before. It's important for you to be sure that you wrote your answers in the right place on your answer sheet. Now, in the listening test, you have 10 minutes to transfer your answer to your answer sheet. But in the case of reading, you're writing your answer directly into the answer sheet. So you don't want to... You don't want to make mistakes because you're not going to be there with the examiner to, you know, to explain yourself that this was what I meant to do. Or I wanted to write 32. I wanted to write it for 32, but I wrote it for 33. You won't be able to do that. So please try to be sure that you wrote the correct answers. And I'll link this very quickly to the point about spelling. Please make sure you write the correct word. The way re reading works is you're not going to invent the word from your head. You're not going to invent answers. You're not going to change the form of the answers. It's exactly the way it is written in the passage that you're expected to supply it back to, you know, the answer that's in your answer sheet. So don't change the form. If it is written as trees, make sure you write trees. Don't forget the S and don't change the word to something else. What else can you take trees to? So don't change the word at all, whether it's the spelling or the tense or anything, just leave it the way it is. The next point now, which should be about um, seven now, is never read everything. I think it, this is linked to the you know the very first two points. Never read everything in your passage. All you need to do is scheme very quickly, scan for your answers. Scheme very quickly and scan for your answers. The next reading tip I want to share is if you are not sure of the answer you have picked for a particular question, please move on. You have 60 minutes. The time is ticking. Do you want to waste that time? I don't think so. So if you have picked an answer or you've not even picked the answer, you're just not sure what it, it seems you just, it's either this or this. You're not certain. Please move on to the next question and come back to it. You know, there's this way the time just keeps ticking and before you know it, you hear a time up. You don't want to have that kind of situation where you didn't complete your test. So even if you're not sure of this particular question, please go on to other ones and come back. You can always do it again, so long as you know what you're doing with other questions. The next one, know the number of words that your question requires. So if the question requires you to write one word, please write one word. Table, cotton, one, just write one word. If it requires two words, um, atmospheric condition, um, cellular something, <laughs> you know, just write two words. Don't write less and don't write more. That's why it's important for you to know where you have that question in the passage and know what is suitable. When you write your answer, look at it. Does that answer fit, you know, the blank where you are supplied it into? Be sure that you're not doing more or less than is required of you. The next reading tip, IELTS reading tip I like to share is 
please read other things every day. It's not just IELTS, you know, reading passages you're going to be reading. Read um, news, well, good news. <laughs> not necessarily the, you know, crazy things that are happening these days. Look for interesting things. If you love sports, find out what's happening in the world of sports. If you love fashion, find out what's happening in the world of fashion. Make sure you're reading, you know, and you could read novels if you can create the time. Just make sure that you're reading other things, you know, um, to help yourself learn how to read and learn how to read fast because that's what the IELTS reading is about. You want to know how to read with speed. The next point is to practice questions regularly. Answering IELTS reading questions on maybe a daily basis or every two days will help you to get familiar with the structure, the style, and everything that the IELTS reading is, you know, related to. So if you're familiar with it, when you do it today and you do it tomorrow and you eventually meet it in your actual tests, you won't be surprised or scared. You will feel this confidence that you know what you're doing. So make sure you practice questions regularly. Another tip I always share, share with um, test takers is when practicing, turn on your timer. You have your phone, go to the clock and pick timer or use the stopwatch or something. Set, you know, it's, it's set um, like 60 minutes down. Let it count down so that when you've exhausted 15 minutes on one passage, you are aware. When you've exhausted 25 minutes on the passage, you are aware. And when you're about to, you know, run out of time, you know, you don't feel tense. You just have this, because that's what your real exam is going to look like. You're going to have the timer up there staring at you and you don't want the officials to put that fear in you. You want to have trained yourself to manage time and finish on time. So please try to do it when you do your own practice. The next point is sometimes you don't have to treat the IELTS reading you know passage like a test you can actually go to the back of the book and use the answer key this is IELTS book 12 and I'm going to turn to the back to show you the answer key okay so this is the back here and then you have you have um you know your answer key what you can do is take the answers here and then go and open you know to the particular passage that has that question and then pick the answer for number one, take it to question one, and then find out why that answer, you know, is the correct one. The idea is to use the answers and the answer key to actually answer the passage. Nobody's going <laughs> to penalize you. It's not expo. It's not a crime. It's just you learning. So sorry. Oh, I want the problem. What is it? Sorry, I'll tend to you soon, please. Sorry for that. Let's just wrap up very quickly. So um, use the answer key to answer the passage and it would work for you. Um, I think the final two, I, have, I kind of lost count, but the final two is, um, uh, what's this one? Be confident in yourself. Don't go changing answers. You know, some people write one answer and they feel it's not correct and then they change it and then they change it as much as possible. You don't want to do that. Try to do the right thing and just feel feel satisfied that you have done the right thing. Okay, boy, come, come. Okay, and um, I think the last one I want to share. I think I've mentioned it already. I I must have you know talked about them in between. Um, just make sure that you practice with the answer sheet, the reading answer sheet, so that you know how you're gonna do, how you're gonna fare in the eventual exam. Okay, so um, that's about it. I would like you to subscribe if you are enjoying my videos. What's the point of watching and just leaving? So please subscribe to my channel so that you can get more videos. And remember to share this video with other people you know are preparing for the IELTS test so that you can succeed in every aspect, including the IELTS reading, which we have done today. And um, remember that you can always improve your English with EnglishNiger.com, E-N-G-L-I-S-H-N-A-I-J-A.com. Whatever part of English you need to work on, pronunciation, grammar, and you know the like, you can always improve on your English abilities and get better. And if you do want to take the IELTS mock test before your real exam, remember to take to visit takeielts.net. Take I E L T S dot net. I'll provide the link in my description box. Um, box. <laughs> Once again, thank you.
and have a wonderful time. Bye-bye.